in the afternoon. So here we are now about 40 minutes, a little bit later. Uh, the rate of spread has been incredible throughout the day. And again, more individuals um, who are just embracing each other. This has to be such a very difficult time for I, these homeowners. I, I, I can't even imagine. And trying to uh, figure out also what to do with livestock that has been displaced. We have Cassie Carlisle at one of those evacuation spots again. Cassie, what's the latest out there? All right, you guys, we're here at the Lakeside Rodeo Grounds. They are opening up the fence right now. Much excitement for the people who have trailers right here, bringing the horses in. Um, they've been readjusting all afternoon. They've been here for about an hour waiting for this moment. Um, I'm waiting for them to come through that area right there. We're on the fairground side of Lakeside Rodeo. There's two entrances. We're off of Vine Street. And again, there's been so many people coming out here hoping that they can get their horses into some shade and hopefully reunite them with their owners. Again, these horses right here, um, the woman who's driving rescued them from a stranger, a pony and a horse are inside there. She's very concerned with how hot it is outside and getting them out of that trailer and into some shade. You can see that truck is coming in right now. I spoke with a man earlier today who said he really wanted to donate to the horses. Um, so I'm working on finding out exactly what to do to make that happen. And of course, we're gonna bring you the latest information as soon as we get it. You can see this truck pulling around in front of me. Um, so it looks like they're staging and figuring out where they're gonna put horses behind me. I can hear the horses clicking their hooves on the uh, the metal bottom of that uh, trailer behind me. I'm trying not to show them because she, she didn't want um, her stranger's horses to be shown that they were entrusting her with. Kathy, so I, I, that's what's going on out here right now. You can see there's a trailer over there that's starting to move towards the gate. And we'll see if, if they come in here in just a second. She's holding a clipboard. I don't know if she's an inspector, but that is what we've been waiting out here for for about the last hour and a half. We've been waiting for the county animal in, in animal control inspectors to come out here and make sure that this area is safe for the horses. Um, when I spoke with the vice president, he said that this area has been used prior for these kind of evacuations. So this is a go-to spot. You can see one, two trailers now lining up to come in excited to help out and get their horses hopefully into some cooler area get them some water get them some hay if they need it because it is about 108 degrees last time i checked on my phone out here in lakeside you guys uh, cassie i just want to ask you a quick question this, there has been some confusion we've had some viewers tweeting us about this uh, saying that the lakeside rodeo grounds was not going to be an evacuation center but clearly people are taking their their animals and their pets there the officials are telling you they are accepting large livestock at this point It sounds like they are accepting horses as well as cows out here. Um, any large livestock is welcome here according to the county's Facebook page. Of course, that's why so many people have come out here because they heard about the county's Facebook page, but it's just now that they're checking people in. You can see the woman on the clipboard riding down this, what I assume would be this woman's information. Of course, we're gonna find that out as soon as we can, as soon as we're off the air. Um, and we'll get closer to the action, of course. Right now, it's a very sensitive time. A lot of um, frustration and concern for the welfare of these animals out here in Lakeside who were rescued from that Alpine fire that's still burning just a few miles away. Okay, Cassie Carlisle over at the Lakeside Rodeo Grounds right now for us. Thank you for the update. Uh, what we're seeing, and I believe what Cassie said, is there are some county inspectors that are there on the ground right now making sure that everything is in order before they start taking more animals. But you could already see people showing up there honestly with nowhere else to go they mm -hmm. have to find somewhere to put these large livestock just devastating images coming in seeing these flames the dark smoke consuming homes yeah. right now these are people's homes yeah and, and this is the time of year we, we talk about this well now 365 days a year we talk about defensible space and how important that is um, it, what's scary about this is, is you see some of these trees in the area that are standing and the homes are on fire, but that's just where these embers will blow at times. It's worse, as Steve Fiorina was mentioning a little bit earlier, when, when you have a large population of eucalyptus trees, they are very large trees, they're very dry leaves, the canopies get caught, and the leaves and the embers will blow for miles at a time. That's not the situation we're seeing here. So these are specific embers that have fallen on some of these homes. They get caught up in the eaves as they blow with the winds and they get into the attic. They start to burn the house from the top down. And this is uh, this particular house right here. 
What a devastating situation. Um, there's really not a whole lot that can be done about this, and firefighters, unfortunately, will, will uh, just kind of walk away from this because it's just a lost cause. All right, we do want to go back out to our 10 News reporter, Rena Nakano. She has an update. Last time we checked in with her, she was on the westernmost edge of the fire. And good afternoon. We are actually now at Engelman Oak Lane, which is a side street off of South Grant. Take a look right here. Firefighters were able to stop this huge fire from coming into this property, but you could see that the fence has been completely melted off. This is the fence right next to the wire fence that has been uh, there to separate the two properties. As you could see on this side of the home is a pool. This completely has been saved. However, if you walk through beyond this uh, fence here, you could see how close the fire actually got. Take a look. It looks like this is some sort of uh, shed area, but firefighters still working on some hot spots right now. But if you look beyond the distance, take a look. There is a bulldozer fighting the fire trying to pat down the ground there. There are many fire trucks, uh, both from the state and also local agencies that have converged in this very location. Again, you're looking at South Grant. That is one of the main thoroughfares of this neighborhood, specifically in Alpine. Earlier, we were doing a, uh, a report from you from a house that had been completely burned. You could see some firefighters still kind of scoping out the area right now. But if you pan down, you could just see how close it got to this house right now. Again, good news is that this home was saved from the fire. But again, just look how close it got. Again, I'm going to leave you with some of those terrifying images of this fence just melted off. I'll send it back to you. The scary thing about it are those propane tanks yes, that yeah. sat so close to the yeah. fence. That's where the firefighters concentrated. All right, quickly, uh, right off of that, let's go to Brian Schlonsky in the Live Center for an update on that. Well, Stephen Lindsay, Rena touched on a few important points that I want to follow up on. First, she showed you that swimming pool in there. Well, one of our producers, Troy Wall, lives in the Alpine area, and he just sent me a text message saying that firefighters are using the pool at his parents' house to try to fight the fire, so using any tools they can to kind of get the upper hand there. Here's another thing that's important. We're going to show you exactly where Rena was standing and why this is important here on Engelman Oak Lane is if you look at this point on the map, that is now as far southwest as we've seen the fire go. She did show you that they were able to save that particular home, but you saw the flames, you saw the smoke, you saw firefighters hard at work. Up until this point, this was as far southwest as we had seen people go right here along South, uh, south Grade Road. Well, now she is over on the other side of the road in this neighborhood on Engelman Oak Lane. You see all these swimming pools uh, that Rena was talking about. So this is now the furthest southwest that this fire has moved. I want to remind you of something, too, that you can do at home. Uh, we have uh, our digital team right now actively updating an interactive map on the, uh, the 10 News site. And this is what it looks like. This is being updated by the minute. Every time our reporters are standing in another area, every time an evacuation zone is added, every time that a road is closed. This is where you can go to find it. You can click on all of these points to figure out exactly what it is. There's photos here embedded as well. So this is something easy to find on the 10 News website. So if you are trying to figure out is the fire near your home? Is the road I'm going to take out of here closed? Is this an area I need to be concerned about? This is an area that we will update constantly, uh, and it's very interactive, can take you right uh, right down to your very street, guys. All right, such a useful tool right now when conditions are changing literally by the second, by the minute. Um, Want to just recap some of the information that we've heard from some of our guests on the phone. We heard from Wes Jones over at SDG&E, um, more than 2,000 customers without power right now, and that number could grow depending on the spread of this fire. He said that um, one of those uh, transformers or, or power sources was affected by the smoke. The other they cut power to as a preemptive measure to make sure that no power lines, you know, contributed to the spread of this fire. And just another home, unfortunately, we're looking at right now from mm -hmm. the air going up in flames. This was the home that we were looking at just a little bit earlier that was uh, engulfed in flames there was a water drop on it from a helicopter did did not do uh, did not do a whole lot of work with that unfortunately just hit right on the roof and then uh, 
And then firefighters, as you can see on the ground, are just really just trying to clean this thing up and make sure that the, it doesn't spread to other homes or other trees in the area and get much worse because you can see that home just down to the bottom of your screen right there. So they're just trying to get this thing out so it doesn't affect anybody else, but it looks like it's a total loss. Unfortunately, uh, thousands of people having to be evacuated right now. One of the places the Red Cross has set up is at the Los Coches Creek Middle School. That is where our 10 News reporter Anthony Pura is right now with an update. Anthony. Yeah, that's right. We're here at Los Coches Middle School. It's directly west of Alpine. And right now you can see that the Red Cross is here. They're starting to get this thing open. There are people already inside the school, but they have just brought in this trailer full of supplies. You can see they'll be unloading it here very shortly. Um, we've see, started seeing people coming in into the parking lot. Uh, there's people waiting in the parking lot, but people have also started to come in to the middle school. I want to try and grab one of the, the Red Cross guys here, uh, Travis. Travis Lindsay, we talked to earlier. Uh, we're over here. Uh, live with us. Could you tell us a little bit about what's in this trailer? What are you guys bringing in? So we have equipment here in order to set up uh, sleeping and eating facilities for about 100 on this trailer. If for some reason we need more than that, we will call in additional supplies. Are we expecting close to 100 people here at the shelter? It is extremely difficult yeah. for us to predict that. It depends on how many homes are affected and how many folks don't have another place to go. So at this point, we do not know. Now, I was in there and I saw some people already taking uh, inside the middle school. Um, so it uh, what time did they start coming in today? How many uh, are they going to be coming in throughout the day? So I arrived at 2 p.m. today, and we already had folks waiting here. The school was generous enough to already be open, so we're providing at least air conditioning shelter. Uh, we are now getting set up right now in order to receive folks and register them, and then that will give us more information on how many folks are here and where they're coming from. Now, I wanted to ask you, because I did speak with a woman in there, and, you know, she was her house is within the fire zone. She doesn't know what's happening with it, but I, I noticed that you guys here are offering... Uh, uh, emotional support and health services as well. Is, is that for people for this very trying time? Could you talk to me a little bit about that? Yes, we certainly have trained personnel who are available. They are not here at this moment, uh, but they know how to help uh, those folks who might need uh, emotional care, emotional support. All right, thank you so much, and we we'll, won't keep you because I know you have a lot to unload here, but we are over here at Los Coches Middle School. The exact address 9669 Dunbar Lane here in El Cajon. Again, it's just directly west of Alpine where these fires are raging. You can see people, uh, they're coming in right now. Uh, they're still trying to get uh, the shelter uh, officially open. They're, they're accepting people now, but they are um, <coughs> that they are bringing in supplies, and they, again, they will be offering uh, food, water, comfort kids, personal hygiene items uh, for people that just absolutely uh, need it at this very trying time. We're going to toss it back to you. All right. Thank you, Anthony. We appreciate that. All right. We've been talking about what's been taking place along the IL-8 all day with traffic. Let's check in with our Brian Schlonsky for an update there. Brian. I show you the new updates on traffic. I want to get you to this. The county, San Diego County, just proclaimed a local emergency due to both the West Fire and the Vander Grift incident, the one over at Camp Pendleton, which we'll also have an update for you on during this hit. Okay, so now to the road closures, what you just mentioned. Caltrans San Diego updating this just several minutes ago, saying that all eastbound I-8 lanes are now open at West Willows Road. However, the I-8 eastbound ramp from Tavern Road and eastbound I-8 off-ramp to West Willows Road are still closed. So a bit of an update there on the 8. Again, eastbound lanes of the 8 open at West Willows Road. Okay, so now transitioning over to Camp Pendleton and that Vandergrift incident. We showed you some of the evacuation areas. It was 40 acres when we hit this maybe 10 minutes ago. Here's the latest update. The Vandergrift incident now at 125 acres burned. No estimate yet on containment here. And approximately 750 homes have been evacuated so far. Here's a little update too. We showed you O'Neill Heights. That was the latest neighborhood evacuated from this fire. Take Santa Margarita Road to get out of town and we'll hit the map one more time as we move uh as we move, here we go, northeast over to where this fire is burning. This is the evacuation center that folks are told to go to, the Page Field House Evacuation Center. And we wondered when we saw this and saw all these areas evacuated from NCIS to the Deleuze Child Development Center all the way up to O'Neill Heights. It looked like a lot bigger area than 40 acres. And now we know with that update from Camp Pendleton, it is bigger, 125 acres. And again, the county proclaiming this a local emergency because of both these 
fires. Guys. All right. Thank you, Brian. Uh, we've been talking to Cassie Carlisle. She's out at the Lakeside Rodeo Grounds and has an update for us right now. What's going on, Cassie? Yeah, that's exactly right. Good afternoon. We're here at Lakeside Rodeo, where normally on a Friday night you'd be seeing a show. Today, it is a haven for rescued horses from the Alpine Fire. Those are the first two horses loaded off. I've heard them whinny a little bit. They're working on getting them water. They actually just laid water down around this round. But you can see over here the line to get in. There's about five trailers in line. People anxiously waiting to bring in their horses. I was talking with people who are organizing this, saying that they are taking only big animals here. So that's horses, cows, anything large. If you're looking to drop off cats or dogs, that's going to be Carlsbad or Bonita. But you can see they're, they're really trying to get things done out here. When the people are coming up to them with the clipboard, they're asking the drivers, if they rescued the horse, where they rescued them from, what kind of horse it is. They're asking if they know who owns the horse or not, if the horse has any injuries, because if the horse has injuries, they will not be in this big round area that you can see here. Now, people are coming in off of Vine Street. More and more trailers are just pulling up every single time I turn around, you guys. So this is where you need to go. The line to get in is starting to grow, but they're bringing people around the back now. So it looks like they really have this well oiled. Again, I spoke with the vice president who said that this has been the place to go during fires like this. You can actually see some of that smoke in the background. I don't know if that's a new fire or if that is the Alpine fire because it feels like the wrong direction. If that is another fire, of course, we'll check on that for you guys out here. At the Lakeside Rodeo, Cassie Carlisle, 10 News. Cassie, thank you for the update. And again, for a lot of people who have been watching, uh, one of our, our former uh, workers here, employees here at 10 News, Alana Light, was telling us a little bit earlier, she had four horses. She could put three in one trailer. She had two others, a mother and a foal. Uh, a stranger, actually, a neighbor's friend came along and grabbed two of her horses. She had no idea where they were. This is a great opportunity for people to kind of check in. That's a great place to start right. right there because a lot of people we know in this confusion have been separated, uh, not just from their pets, but uh, large livestock and horses. Yep, a lot of neighbors stepping up, as we heard Steve Fiorina mentioning, people in this area help each other, and that's exactly what we've been seeing today. Uh, back on the line with us is Bob Lyon, retired Cal Fire captain. Bob, just Give us your take on, on what you've been seeing. Some of these images, just devastating. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, firefighters are doing everything they can to try to control this thing and save as many properties as they can and protect people as best they can. But given all the conditions that they're confronting right now with the, the high, high temperatures and the really, really low humidity, uh, plus the winds on top of that and the terrain, topography, everything they've got going against them, uh, they're doing a great job. Uh, from what I can see, but their hands are definitely full. Bob, talk a little bit about as the day goes on, we know that the winds are going to pick up here a little bit, but then they begin to die down drastically and how that helps uh, the job of the firefighters and those who are fighting this from the air as well. Well, it, it's going to help the ground crews quite a bit. The The trouble is, is that by the time the temperatures drop and the winds start dropping, uh, we're getting closer to uh, the sunset hour, and most of the aircraft uh, can't fly at night. There's only mm -hmm. a few in this county that uh, actually operate at night. So uh, you'll be limited to just ground resources at some point when we get that far into the day. Bob, we were hearing from uh, Brian Slonsky earlier that one of our uh, producers here, his family lives in the Alpine area, and they said that the firefighters are actually using the water from their backyard pool. We see a lot of pools in this area. I mean, it, it seems like firefighters are just trying to utilize whatever resources they can right now. Well, pretty much that, that's the job of the firefighter is they're, they're supposed to adapt and overcome whatever comes their way. And with these power outages, uh, a lot of times the pumps for the system to keep the water pressure up can be affected by that. Sometimes they have backup generators, but for that area, I can't tell you exactly what they've got going on. But, yeah, that is one, you know, avenue of uh, getting water to the firefighters. A lot of swimming pools, just a regular pool is probably 10,000 gallons of water. 
And if they can use that water to uh, sit in firefighting, they're certainly going to do that. Now, Bob, kind of explain from this uh, wide shot that we're seeing from Sky 10 right now. This, just a matter of uh, 30 minutes ago, there were huge flames and huge plumes of smoke that were coming out of this. Uh, explain what the firefighters are doing right now, because it looks like a lot of the air attack has calmed down. I wouldn't say that they've got, they've got this under control by any means, but what firefighters are doing right now and what they'll be doing at least for the next hour or so. Well, they're, they're not going to be able to relax because just like I said, and just like your reporters on the ground have told you, is it looks like it's down for a while and then it just takes a little bit of wind or the conditions to change just a little bit and it'll flare up again. So probably the aircraft are back at Ramona. Uh, they could be refueling. The pilots need a break too. You know, they're just human beings. They're, they're only capable of flying for so long mm -hmm. before they need a break. They have to use the bathroom. They've got to, you know, grab something to eat, something to drink. So they're going to try to rotate those guys out, and if they get a little downtime like this, they're going to rush them back there, try to give them a little bit of a break if they can. They're all going to be loaded with retardant and ready to go. The air attack's going to stay overhead, and the ground units right now, they're doing the same thing. Those guys are getting an opportunity to take a break and get something to drink and try to just relax for a few minutes to try to re-energize themselves. That's what they're going to do. Yeah. All right, Bob. Hang on the line. Again, we want to continue to, to pick your brain about this. Uh, our producers, if you guys can give us an update on what we're looking at here, uh, the camera has just shifted to, I, I don't think that's the, the Pendleton fire. This looks like it might even okay. be even further east, so yeah. we might have another fire that's breaking out. We'll give you an update on that. Uh, no confirmation yet, but we'll give you an update on that here in just a couple of minutes, but that would be devastating if, if they have to uh, now shift resources to yet another area. All right, so we are still waiting for another official update on acreage from Cal Fire, but at last count, uh, the West Fire burning 350 acres so far, 0% containment, hopefully getting an update on that situation soon. Um, and we still have another fire burning at Camp Pendleton. We had an update from Brian Schlonsky. That is on base, but it is still burning. Burning, of course, uh, lots of resources being spread out all over our county today in these very hot, very dry conditions. We have winds uh, that are compounding these just terrible, mm -hmm. terrible conditions right now. We're seeing these air tankers, these choppers trying to make the most of the daylight. We heard Bob talking about, you know, once the sun starts to go down, these cannot operate. So these are precious hours right now where they can try to help these ground crews who are under tremendous strain uh, in, in these conditions right now. And just off to the left of your screen where that air tanker just dropped, you can see the traffic is flowing mm -hmm. right now on the 8th. That's the eastbound uh, 8 that you're looking at uh, that's on the right of right there in the middle of your screen right now. All three lanes are open, and those opened up just about 20 minutes ago. SDG&E, or the uh, Caltrans, that is, came through and started picking up all the cones. It was down to one lane. It was very slow traffic. Of course, that's a very dangerous situation to be going through with one lane anyway, but a lot of people were just stopping to, to try and uh, check out the fire and what was taking place at the time. This split screen right here shows you what's taking place in the air and on the ground. That's exactly what you're looking at on the left-hand side of your screen is what you're looking at overhead. So that gives you an idea of how big those flames are right now. Numerous homes, we don't have an exact count right now, but uh, numerous homes have been lost to this fire, and about 3,000 people are without power uh, from SDG&E's records uh, about 45 minutes ago. That number, uh, we don't expect it to increase, uh, but that could change as, as the night goes on. But because of either smoke or, or they've had to trip those lines anyway just for safety reasons, sdg &E has cut power to, to about 3,000 people in the area. That's right. You see on your screen that the county, San Diego County, has declared a local emergency because of the fires that are burning right now. Uh, and also an update on traffic. You saw the 8 there in that shot from our chopper. All eastbound lanes of I-8 of West of Willow Road, I'm sorry, at West Willow Road are open right now. Uh, we do have the evacuation centers in place, the Los Coches Creek Middle School is actually at one of those uh, evacuation centers and we're going to check in with him for an update. Anthony. Yeah, that's right. We're over here at Los Coches Middle School. It's just directly west of Alpine right now uh, on the 8. Now you can see that the Red Cross is here. They've been uh, 
setting up the shelter. They've got tons of supplies that have just come in right now. This is for 100 people. They're not sure if they're going to need as much, but that's what they're prepared for right now. And if they need any more, they will be, they can easily call for more supplies and bring people out this way. Now, they're going to be unloading this here very shortly. They have set up the gym here at uh, Los Coches Middle School uh, as a shelter. You can see there's people outside already. Now, I want to speak with Jane here because I spoke with Jane earlier, and you were one of the first people to arrive at this shelter. Could you tell us how you ended up here? Um, well, we were at home, and uh, there was a evacuation call on our landline saying to evacuate at, it must have been around 12 30 one o'clock and if that's the time i'm not sure but we started packing packing the cars and everything all our essentials and kind of you know, laid low and waited um there are a lot of cars already all the way up tavern road um so we waited until it cleared out so we could leave and we got a second call at two o'clock to that our area needs to be evacuated how are you feeling right now because you are, told me you weren't sure how your your house is doing right now well, my husband, we have four gallons, five gallons of barricade, which is a, a fire retardant that we have in our garage. It's been there. We had it since the Cedar Fire, bought it after the Cedar Fire in an event if we needed it. So he did activate it and sprayed barricade all in our eaves and all over all our windows, did all that, and we left. I got to ask you, is this the first time that you're staying at a shelter? Do you know what to expect? Yeah. No, I don't. Usually we, we evacuate into San Diego, into relatives' homes. and But the problem with that is we don't know what, really what's going on. And it was very frustrating for us the last time. So this time we decided to come right here to Los Coches, help out some of the um, you know, Red Cross people, see what we could do, and just um, you know, hold tight until we hear something. And they open up the freeways and open up our area. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you so much. I'm so sorry for everything that you've gone through. Thanks. Now, we are hearing that there's another fire that started in this area. I'm looking around. I haven't seen any signs of smoke. Um, it's really blue skies out here, but we are going to keep an eye on that fire that has been reportedly broken out in this area, and we will bring it to you. We're going to toss it back to you right now. Okay. All right. All right. Let's check in with our Brian Schlonsky in the live center right now for an update. Brian. Yeah, guys, we just got an urgent update from fire crews that are racing right to the area where you just saw Anthony doing that live shot. Again, this is supposed to be the evacuation center, and it looks like it's possible firefighters are going to have to send resources to deal with another fire. So here's Anthony, Los Coaches Creek Middle School, right along I-8 and Dunbar Lane. So it's a bit off from where he is, but very, very close. And right now, we're they're getting reports that there's a column of smoke there. I think it was actually visible in Cassie Carlisle's live shot. Fire crews say they are racing to that area. They're going to try to figure this one out. Hopefully, it's something small that doesn't get out of control again, because this is where people are trying to go to escape this. So I-8 and Dunbar Lane, a third area of concern that we will be watching closely. We're also sending a reporter over that direction as well. We'll let you know as soon as we get an update on that one, guys. Okay, Brian, thank you. Quick up. Update from Cal Fire San Diego. They're going to let us know what's going on. It's 3:38 right now. At 4 o'clock, there's going to be a media briefing in front of the Alpine Fire Station at 1364 Tavern Road. So again, we're going to get much more information on uh, on the West Fire, uh, what's taking place at Camp Pendleton, of course, whatever this other possible fire that may have broken out uh, around Los Coches Middle School as well. All right, we want to go check back in with our 10 News reporter Steve Fiorina, who is on the ground. Steve, what can you tell us about where you're at? We are uh, on the south side of uh, eastbound 8, uh, just west of, um, I'm sorry, just east of Alpine, where we've seen this uh, entire hillside go up in flames over the last few hours. Uh, that house at the far end was protected, but looking over the hill, he's showing you one that has just basically burned to the ground. We've seen it. Uh, you've had a picture back there live of this one as uh, the flames got it. There was some concern about the one to the front of it uh, in the foreground of that picture, a little bit to the right. That one has so far been able to be protected. There are uh, several people up on the hill. Mike, if you move over to the right, see those three people? Looks like civilians up on the uh, ridge looking down on the houses. That's one thing we haven't seen a lot of out here today is uh, civilians. We saw one in the yard of a house that uh, managed to be saved earlier. The uh, fence in the back tipped down. It melted and went down. Firefighters, you see those trucks down there, they have been protecting that house. A lot of fire activity on uh, 
Old Highway 80 down below us, there's a helicopter. That one has been making drop after drop. I assume it's going to hit the trees right below us here in just a second because that smoke just started billowing in just the last half a minute or so. as close to a fire drop as you're going to get. We got uh, tankers here as well. They have been dropping retardant. That's the pink or orange uh, fire retardant that they have huge loads that they bring in from uh, the Ramona Air Base. And uh, the helicopters, though, are able to uh, use those hoses and drop down next to a reservoir or lake near here. So the uh, copters doing a magnificent job uh, as they're going through. Fire crews on the ground, of course. They had bulldozers here earlier. You can see some of the land. I know it, most of it is black over there. He's showing you the helicopters right now, but just below it where all of the... Uh, the scorched earth is there are a lot of areas there where bulldozer went through earlier trying to save us a break all right steve fiorina thank Horse you trailers just now heading to the uh, east there goes another large one that's one of the concerns out here so many people have livestock and it's like a caravan here uh these are multiple horse horse trailers uh, we talked with Alana a little earlier. She used to work at Channel 10. She raises horses out here, and she said a couple of hers were uh, whereabouts unknown. But many people here look out for their neighbors beyond uh, what you might expect. And if somebody found one, they would take it to safety. We saw somebody leading one earlier today and uh, just walking down the highway down there. And uh, hopefully uh, all of them will be saved. A lot of smoke in the area in the air still, but it's starting to clear a bit. We'll stay with it. Stay with you. Live uh, in Alpine, Steve Fiorina, 10 News. All right, Steve Fiorina, thank you so much for that update. We want to go now to uh, Travis Rice. He is at Scenic View Place. Hi, Travis. Hey, good evening. Yeah, things have finally cleared up here at Scenic View Place. Of course, we still have our masks on because the smoke is pretty thick, but the sun is out, which means it's a little bit brighter. We're able to see uh, just exactly where the fire has touched here at Scenic View, uh, Scenic View Place. Now, the fire, of course, started uh, uh, about half a mile uh, east of here, but you can see it went all the way through this Viejas Creek, uh, burning what appears to be at least a dozen homes just in this vista alone. Um, right here, you have a car that's burned out. Uh, Jeff follows me over here. This house is gone. Several cars down there are also gone. There's a third home down there. Uh, a whole lot of just devastation. And any time the wind kicks up, it does feel like someone's opening the oven door on you. Um, if you want to take a gander over here, you have several active fires still present, presently being fought by, uh, I believe it's Alpine or Sequan. And also the city of San Diego is here as well. They've been dealing with this home. It's uh, appearing to burn on the roof. There's some smoke coming from the top. Uh, I mean, I don't want to get into the good news here, but you're seeing a lot more white smoke than black smoke earlier, which means they have gotten water on it and a lot of the, uh, the structures that were burning or were threatened um, are, are not in much imminent danger anymore. But of course, uh, this fire is, uh, is not contained. At least 350 acres were the, uh, the last update we had been given. And uh, again, those conditions not any easier. Now that the sun is out, we're gonna be reminded that it is uh, triple digits. I think right now it's about 108 degrees with a 30 uh, 30 mile an hour gust when it's really blowing, but right now it's a, it's a little breezy, not as bad. But uh, another thing, the one final thing we should point out here, you have a whole bunch of power lines in this neighborhood. And uh, if you take a look at some of them, uh, they are burning or have burned uh, off in the distance. There's actually a power line that's on fire. And uh, that's one of the biggest fears here for residents and for people on the ground, the firefighters, is that if one of these poles does fall over, you suddenly have the risk of live wires and uh, electricity, you know, with uh, the, the fatal electrocution. Um, there's actually a burnt bunny on the ground over there. Um, it's 
it's uh, still alive, of course. Um, but if, if you if Jeff can maybe get a shot of that, there's a, a half appears to be burnt bunny. Anyway, but the uh, the, the homes here are uh, are still very much so um, being in the uh, being in the throngs of this fire. Um, at least a dozen to our account have been destroyed here. Um, the air quality is awful. Um, but a lot of people here um, that are dealing with them have the masks on. Uh, a lot more white smoke than previously, but um, it, it's, it's a lot less dire than it was two hours ago when the sky was, uh, was totally dark here. Travis, we know we're, that you're on a bit of delay, so we'll, we'll just hang with us as we ask this question. You've been talking about the sun is back out. You know, I'm assuming that just uh, not too long ago, it looked pretty dark out there, that there was so much smoke, so much cover, you guys couldn't even see the sun for, for a couple of hours. Yeah, I mean, not to say it was apocalyptic, but it was a it was a dark gray in the sky. You were hearing the pops, the explosions of structures going up, and also propane tanks. Uh, this is kind of the southwest end of that Viejas Creek. This is kind of the uh, the natural highway that had allowed that fire to burn. So it was burning, and then the wind was pushing the ash over Alpine, uh, which which gave it the effect that it was peering a lot. A lot bigger than it was. Of course, 350 acres is no small fire, but uh, yes, things are things are clearing up. But now we're again we're being uh, hit with that heat, and that's that's the whole reason why we had this fire in the first place. It was it was hot and it was gusty. All right, Travis Rice, thank you for that update there at Scenic View Place. Unfortunately. Homes lost in that area. Um, we want to go check back in with the 10 News reporter Rena Nakano right now, live for us. Hi, Rena. Hey, earlier we were down by South Grade, but up here uh, by Highlands View, you could see that uh, it's kind of the mop-up stage. A lot of the uh, uh, Caltrans, as well as the San Diego Sheriff's Department, uh, they're kind of looking at this area as kind of the edge of the uh, fire. You could see that a lot of the hillside has actually been burnt down completely. A lot of neighbors talking about how close it got to their home. We are told this area on a scenic view and Highlands view is still evacuated. But however, some uh, residents are coming back just to check on it because like Travis said, things are getting slightly better. But again, right now what's hitting us hard are just the images of what people are going to back to. You can see that van and parts of the fence completely burned out. But again, a very difficult situation. Uh, the fire firefighters have been out here. Right now, we can tell you that it's 110 degrees. Sheriffs who are keeping uh, this area kind of under control, they too are suffering from this 110 degree heat and 14 mile per hour winds. So again, it's one of those situations that we will keep an eye on. We'll monitor the situation. But as of right now, what we can tell you is Burton's hillside is completely uh, burnt off. There's still a lot of helicopters in the air, but uh, we'll keep you updated. All right, Live Rena, in Alpine, I'm Rena Nakano. Rena, Santa thank you. A lot of devastating pictures there. We do want to let our viewers know it's uh, it's almost 3.49, so that means we're about 10 minutes away from a press conference with Cal Fire San Diego, with county administration officials as well, giving us an update on this West Fire and what else is burning in the area. As you can see just from, from this shot here in the distance, as Mike Inman zooms in there, there's there's fires, there's hot spots that are that are all over the place. This started burning the West Fire, they're calling it at about eleven thirty. It started quickly with about ten acres, jumped to at one PM about 150 acres. Now it's about 350 acres. That's the last update. We're just assuming it's going to be more than that here in the next uh, 10 minutes or so when they give us an update. It's been a tough day weather-wise, too. Yes, definitely. Our uh, 10 News weathercaster, Jennifer De La Cruz, is here to update us on those conditions, those temperatures, and those winds. Yeah, fortunately, the winds actually have been improving. So it's still a very dangerous situation out there, but we are starting to see those winds subside. Your current temperature in Alpine is 105 degrees. Humidity also improving from what we saw this morning right now at 13. 13%. Those winds still coming out of the east, so this is still a Santa Ana wind event. Not bad by uh, some standards that we have seen here in San Diego, but certainly a dangerous situation out there in Alpine for today. So those winds out of the east bringing in very dry and hot air 
at 9 miles per hour gusts. The last reported gust was at 19 miles per hour. So earlier on today, we had gusts between 20 to 30 miles per hour. So overall, we are starting to see some slow improvements. Hour by hour, our winds are going to keep decreasing as we head further through the evening by 730. 6 mile per hour gusts, and we're going to continue to see them dropping after that down to just 3 miles per hour overnight. But once again, by tomorrow, we will see them picking up once again to about 25 miles per hour for your sustained winds and your gusts for tomorrow. Hour by hour for your temperatures. Still extremely warm even after 5 o'clock this afternoon. Temperatures well above 100 degrees, so extremely hot for this time of year in Alpine and those conditions not good for those firefighters who are out there working tirelessly to get this fire under control. 97 degrees will be your temperature by 7 o'clock tonight, even overnight, only dropping down to the 80s. So we're not seeing a much relief from this heat, and that's going to continue to be the case all around the county. Doesn't matter where you are from the coast to the deserts. We have advisories all over San Diego County. Excessive heat warning right now in place through 9 o'clock tonight for our valleys and our deserts. 102 degrees to 115 have been our conditions this afternoon for our valleys, up to 118 for our deserts. On your coastline, dealing with a heat advisory that was issued just a couple of hours ago by the National Weather Service, taking us through 9 o'clock tonight. For the mountains, 95 to 102 degrees for today, 94 to 102 for the coast. After that, we have that excessive heat warning currently in place for the valleys. We'll be expiring at 9 o'clock tonight, then transitioning transitioning into a heat advisory for tomorrow that will take us through 9 p.m. for Saturday. So once again, those winds in Alpine will continue to decrease as we head into the early morning hours. But once again, certainly going to be a problem as we head into tomorrow with very dry conditions. Our wind conditions continue and uh, certainly best of luck to everybody out there. Mm. All right. Thank you, Jennifer Taylor Cruz. Uh, we want to go back out to the Lakeside Rodeo Grounds where they are accepting large livestock, mostly horses. Cassie Carlisle is there with an update. Good afternoon, you guys. I'm out here in the area where you normally would be loading up as a bull rider, but right now there are a few goats that have come in, and then you can hear them a little bit right now, and then behind them we have alpacas. There have been animals just coming in over the past hour and a half since they've opened up. We've got about six horses, two, four, six, eight horses, and more are being unloaded behind me as we speak. Um, that line has shallowed and slowed, um, so there's not as many people waiting to unload their animals. You can see this is just a little bit of shade out here in the heat. Just to tell you how hot it is, you can see that entire big arena is almost dry. Now you saw in my first live hit, they were wetting it down and you can see that the heat has just soaked all that moisture up, made it evaporate. You can see that there's miniature horses here, there's big horses here, and it because it's so hot, the volunteers have been pouring water on themselves. They've been guzzling down water bottles as we've been doing as well. But again, it's all for the animals that have been evacuated from that Alpine uh, fire. And I did just speak with a couple people who are also just coming in to lend a hand. I came here to help with anybody who needed help with the horses. A lot of people are in a hurry right now and they don't know what they're doing. It's really scary because they get really scared because fires like this, it gets really scary. It's scary for all of the animals that were involved in that. So many people lending a hand during this time of need because animals could not get out of their pens, of course, without assistance. So a lot of people, complete strangers, coming out here, helping the animals, helping them evacuate from the Alpine fire as well. You guys out here at the Lakeside Rodeo off of Vine Street. Cassie Carlisle, 10 News. Cassie, thank you so much. Again, we are about a little over five minutes away on an update, a briefing, a media briefing from Cal Fire San Diego and from county uh, officials as well on uh, how many acres have burned so far in the West Fire, uh, how many crews are involved in this, and, and an update on how they are going to continue to attack this throughout the night as well. Because as Jen was just showing us, it's just going to get hotter and windier before it uh, dies down. Let's check in now in the live center. Our Brian Schlonsky has another update for us. Brian. Well, Steve, as we wait on those official updates, I want to take you to something that we do know, show you the direction of spread, how this thing has been moving, and a couple before and after images. So the fire, the first call started coming in this morning, kind of in this area. You remember the mobile home park that was initially evacuated? That is right around this area. Then, of course, our crews have been moving west. Uh, our last check from Rena and, and Travis and a couple of these folks. Travis is more in this area, Scenic View Road, and then Rena.
marina is kind of on the other side of South Grade Road. So to show you that it's moving west, I want to show you our digital team has been working on some of these, these before and after photos to show you uh, the area. So there again is that mobile home park that was initially evacuated, bottom right-hand corner of your screen. We don't know the damage uh, in there yet, but again, evacuations were ordered and then the fire moving this direction. So as I slide this tool across, and again, all this can be found on 10news.com, you can see the devastation in just this small swatch uh, of land. You can see the, the charred area, you can see the fire line, some of the flame uh, retardant even showing up there on the map and, and some of the areas that have been wiped away uh, by the flames already in this small area. These tools just really show you the sheer power of this fire. Again, what we know right now is that it had been moving west toward that south grade road, but as far as the acreage and some of those updates, get that hopefully in less than five minutes. One thing to remember, it's not just us here in the San Diego County area. Uh, at last check, there are 40 large wildfires burning right now in 11 states. Triple digit temperatures breaking records all across Southern California. Guys. All right. Thank you, Brian Shlonsky, with an update for us there. Again, we're eagerly awaiting uh, an official update from Cal Fire. But right now, in the meantime, we want to go to Travis Rice. He is still at Scenic View Place. Travis, what can you tell us? Hey guys, yeah, um, we're about to talk to uh, Battalion Chief Steve Salas with San Diego Fire Department. They've been out here all morning and uh, actually he, he just got called away to something real quick. But uh, of course we can talk to him right now about uh, what they've been dealing with. And uh, joining me right now is uh, Battalion Chief uh, Steve Salas. And uh, I guess first off, you know, how you guys been dealing with this today? Good, we're just bumping and running, going from one house to the other. Um, right now, the fire, the forward progress has slowed that we're able to spend some time on individual houses like this one where we have this pretty stubborn attic fire. I was going to say, so, so talk on that for, for a second, if you could, because you guys have been dealing with this house for a little while now. Yep. Um, it's, it's, it's burned a little bit on the top. Yeah, we've been here for a couple hours. It's gone to the attic. Uh, we think we get it. Then the wind flares up and it ignites it again. So uh, we're doing a rotation of crews. And like I said, we've been balancing this thing for about two hours trying to get this attic to go out. Sure, sure. And then um, we, we're going to get a big update from Cal Fire here just in a few a few minutes. But, I mean, just from a, a morale standpoint, I mean, what's it like for you guys? You're out there. It's, it's 110 right now, 109 degrees. What's it like for your firefighters doing this in this heat? You know, it, it's tough, but we train for this. Our crews are pretty fit. You know, we work out on a regular basis. Um, on a hot day like this, everyone starts hydrating the night before. So we usually come prepared for this. It doesn't mean it's easy or it's comfortable, but we're always prepared to deal with the elements. Certainly. Well, Battalion Chief Salas, I won't take up any more time. Thank you guys for what you're all doing. Um, and like uh, like uh, Steve and, and everybody has been saying, we will be hearing from CAL FIRE just in a, in a few minutes, but uh, at least from the firefighters that have been kind of uh, at the West Fire, um, for the most of the day, that's what it's been like for them. You heard him talking about how they are, they have been prepared for this. This is, you know, to, to the average bear, 110 uh, out there with the hose seems like a lot, but this is what uh, these guys do every day, and uh, we certainly respect them for that. That we do. Travis Rice, thank you so much for that update, uh, especially that perspective from our local firefighters who are out there on the front lines ready to protect people, homes, animals. Um, you know, the good news, as Travis was mentioning, just from his vantage point on the ground there and what we're seeing from the air right now is definitely a lot less black smoke, mm -hmm. um, but, but still homes smoldering, uh, hot spots, and just a huge amount of area that has all already burned and you can see the evidence of these fire retardant drops where homes have been saved, thank goodness, um, because of those drops. And the difficulty that the battalion chief was talking about, they have spent at least two hours on that one home and it sparks back up and that keeps them from moving on to another place. There are numerous stories like that that are happening all around this area right now. So you can see how difficult it is for firefighters to battle uh, not just what's uh, taking place in the brush, which is incredibly dry right now, but also in the homes. Um, just give you a quick update. We're about to get a full update from Cal Fire San Diego. They're going to give us this update, a media briefing from the Alpine Fire Station. What we know so far as we approach the now San Diego at four is that they're going to give us this update. But what we know so far is that at about 1130, this fire broke out. It quickly spread to about 10 acres. Um, by one o'clock, it was 150 acres. By 
330, it was about 350 acres, or 230 that is, it was about 350 acres. So we're going to get a complete and total update from CAL FIRE and county administration officials about really how big this fire is right now, how many crews are finding it, and what they expect here in the coming hours. Because as Jen has been telling us, uh, the winds are, are going to pick up a little bit before the night goes on. It is, it's incredibly hot out there. It's going to be 80 degrees overnight at, at 3 in the morning. And um, as they've been talking about all day, too, we've had the, one of the driest winters on record. So this area has not seen a whole lot of rain or anything like it in several, several months. So everything is just completely dry there. And, and that's the situation now where they're just trying to figure out what they need to do overnight with all of these hot spots that you see like burning right there in the middle of your screen. That's right. It is now 4 o'clock on this Friday afternoon. You are watching the Now San Diego. I am Lindsay Pena. He is Steve Atkinson. And uh, we want to go check in before we get an official update from CAL FIRE because they don't believe they're quite ready yet with Brian Schlonsky in the Live Center. He has an update on some smoke that we saw earlier in a possible other fire. Brian. Yeah, Steve and Lindsay. And if they start that press conference and you need to come me off do so because the good news about that wisp of smoke we told you about maybe a half hour ago that was very close to the Los Coches Creek Middle School of course our evacuation zone Dunbar and I eat uh, I eight east well the the we just got confirmed with CHP that they went there they checked that report out there is no fire there near that evacuation center so that is the good news however we've confirmed this as well we are in communication with the base at Miramar San Diego Diego Fire has sent crews there to figure out what may be going on there. There's a possibility that smoke or something from Miramar from the base was seen in this area of Dunbar and the 8, and that is why the call came in, and crews did race over there. They did check it out. CHP, the folks who actually checked that out, nothing to worry about there near the evacuation zone. That's still in place there at Los Coches, and whenever we figure out what exactly is happening at Miramar now, we will, of course, let you know. Guys. Okay, Brian Schlonsky, lots of spots popping up all over the county today. Um, unfortunately, our resources stretched very thin. As many firefighters as can be are on the ground right now trying to battle these blazes. We have lots of air support um, making use of these daylight hours to get a handle on these flames. Uh, just really, I mean, striking images that you can see. I mean, some houses spared from these flames, others like this that we're looking at, not so lucky, unfortunately. No, and I think you could see from that shot there on your right, which was a little bit wider just a minute ago, this is, a, this is still a relatively new community, one that's probably uh, was put in place since the, our last really major wildfire back in 2007. We've had a couple of those that have burned through the East County and saw a lot of devastation. A lot of these homes are under some of the new codes, but even with those new codes, the, the tile roofing that you see on the house there to the left didn't save it whatsoever, didn't save the one that, uh, that's on the right-hand side of your screen either. So you can just see how dangerous these things are. And as the battalion chief was telling um, our Travis Rice with this shot on your left-hand side right there, they've been on this house for at least the last couple of hours as well, just trying to make sure that it doesn't get out of control, burn anymore. There's a tremendous amount of damage that's already been done to it, but um, they're just trying to stay on top of that one right now so that it doesn't spread to other homes that's here. Definitely, and if you are watching and need some place to go, the Los Coches Middle School is open right now for people who need a cool place to be, something to eat, uh, a place to just kind of regroup right now if you cannot be in your home. Also, if you have large lives stock, uh, horses, cattle, that kind of thing, you can bring that to the lakeside uh, rodeo grounds. And I'm also seeing here uh, a tweet uh, from the San Diego County Department of Animal Services. If you do need help evacuating your animals, you can call them, 619-498-2361. Again, we are awaiting an official update from CAL FIRE officials. Uh, they are supposed to talk to us any minute now uh, to give us an update on the acreage of this fire, the West Fire, and if the containment has gone up from zero. That was our last update. At least 350 acres, zero percent contained right now. Uh, just burning very quickly and unfortunately burning homes and destroying everything that people have. We don't have a, a, an exact count. That's what we're waiting on right now to see how many homes have burned out. But, but again, some of these 
These homes are a little bit further out in the East County. A lot of them are rely on propane tanks, and we've had some of our reporters talking about that. Uh, they have seen or heard propane tanks exploding in the in the area. Uh, people. What looks like uh, people just moving things out in their uh, recycling containers to try and uh, evacuate in some way. I can't confirm that, but that's what it looks like. And we've had numerous people who are just uh, leaving as quickly as they can. We're about roughly four and a half hours into this West Fire right now. Um, if there is any good news to report at this time, Travis Rice was mentioning this a little bit earlier. Our Steve Theorina, who is very experienced on covering wildfires as well, I've been talking about the white smoke that you see there on the right-hand side of your screen from Sky 10. That's always a very good sign. Uh, when you see that black smoke, that's fresh fuel, that's a home burning, that is um, uh, brush that is burning. But the, the white smoke usually means that uh, the firefighters do have a handle on this situation. And just in watching this over the last at least even hour, uh, we've seen a, a really dramatic change in the environment as well. Um, with uh, the, what the smoke looks like and what it, it can tell us. Um, we're seeing, looking at Travis Rice there on the left-hand side of your screen, he's got the mask, the, the people who live out there as well do, so uh, you can tell that the smoke's still pretty heavy and uh, very difficult breathing conditions at this yeah, time. Definitely, we heard from a uh, CAL FIRE uh, firefighter out there with Travis about just the conditions that they're dealing with and how difficult it is to fight fires in these conditions. But, you know, he said that this is this is what they prepare for mm -hmm. and, and this is what they're uh, unfortunately used to, that they hydrate all, you know, the days before and um, they're making sure that they're ready to go when something like this breaks out. Um, we had just seen our reporter Travis Rice uh, talking to two people. Looks like he might be talking mm -hmm. to them even further to see exactly what their situation might be. Not sure if one of those homes happens to be there. We're going to check in with him. Travis, what do you have? Hey, good afternoon. Yeah, I'm here with uh, with Kara and Alex. They are actually, um, Kara grew up in uh, in this house that uh, I guess does have some fire damage. Um, and uh, I, I guess, Kara, how um, how are you guys doing? I mean, we're okay. Um, I'm glad that everybody was able to get out. Um, it came around this ridge right here, and they basically only had a matter of minutes to get out. So we came back as soon as we could to just grab whatever the awesome firefighters could give us and they got us picture albums and everything they could so we're okay yeah i mean uh so when exactly did you find out about 11 noon yeah, yeah it was right around there noonish at 11 30 i got a yeah. call from them saying that they're just coming right over the hill and we were on the way to the beach me and my family and we turned right around and tried to come back and we couldn't and we came back and we saw flames on the roof i started the pool pump and we just started hosing everything down what we could and trying to give them a hand and I think they got a handle on it. We're thankful, yeah, happy. Very thankful. The firefighters are awesome. They just put another crew in there to try and wet it down some more. So we'll we're salvaged. yeah, we're really thankful. Well, I was going to say certainly you you know it, it's nice to have the firefighters here helping you guys out. But I mean, I, you probably know better than anyone. I, I'm sure you know these people whose homes are lost. I mean, what's it like to see neighbors' homes devastated like this? It's heartbreaking because I mean, I don't I don't think that they even had enough time to get anything out. So it's. It's devastating for sure, um, but we're glad that everybody was able to get out, and in the end, it's just stuff that can be replaced. Mm -hmm. And so if you guys have been here for most of the day, I mean, just characterizing it now, I mean, at least the sun's out. It's not as, as doom and gloomy as it was earlier. I mean, do you, do you, still, do you feel like you kind of made it through the, the thick of it, or you know, what, what are the hopes right now for, for people that live here? I mean, we're hoping it's, it's done for now. Or always, but yeah, yeah it, I mean, it looks better than it did earlier. Hope so, the winds calm down. And yeah, certainly. Well, anyway, I, I appreciate you guys' time Thank talking you. to us. Thank the Cal Fire is about to give the update. Anyway, guys, uh, yeah, as you just heard, that's uh, some of the people that live here in these neighborhoods and what they've been dealing with. Uh, Cal Fire is about to give us an update, guys. Back to you. All right, thank you, Travis, for the update. We feel for those people. Wish them the best for us, too. This is a, a tough situation. They're taking it very well. Left-hand side of your screen, you are seeing uh, people from the county and Cal Fire who are about to give us an update on what's called the West Fire, which has been burning since about um, 1130 today. The last update that we have 
is about 350 acres. There was a road closure, a uh, couple of them on some of the smaller roads, and then on the I-80 was down to uh, I-8 East, down to one lane at some point. Uh, that has now been reopened, as you can see from Sky 10. Traffic is flowing, but still very slowly. So they're going to give us an update on um, on the situation right now. So let's uh, let's start to listen in here and see what the what's happening. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Kendall Bortezer. I'm a fire captain, the public information officer with Cal Fire here in San Diego. Uh, we've called this media briefing together to uh, let some of the folks behind me speak on behalf of some of the different things that are going on with this incident. At approximately 11:25 this morning, we received the report of a wildland fire in the Alpine area. Uh, where you're at right now. Currently, I'll give you the status of the fire right now. We're at 400 acres and we have 5% containment. 5%, we still have a lot of open line out there. The firefighters are making great progress, but there's a lot of work still to be done. Uh, at this point, I'm gonna introduce, we have, uh, we're in unified command between CAL FIRE, United States Forest Service and Alpine Fire Protection District. So what I'll do at this point, I'm gonna introduce one of the incident commanders, uh, Chief Daryl Pena from CAL FIRE to give you an update on, uh, on the status of the fire itself right now. Chief. Thank you, good afternoon. Uh, my name's uh, Chief Daryl Pena, Division Chief with CAL FIRE. Uh, like uh, Captain Borti said, we had the incident start uh, this morning around 11.30. Uh, it started off of uh, Viejas or e East Willows and Alpine Boulevard, which is in the Cleveland National Forest DPA. It quickly spread west.